Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News First at Four. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Whitney is on assignment today. It is an exciting day for sports fans. College basketball kicks off today all across the country. We've already had one local team in action today, but before that, our Brenna Green joining us from Gonzaga tonight as students are waiting to get back into the kennel for a real game for the first time in nearly two years. Brenna, are you in a tent, by the way? I, I am in a tent. You know, we tenting is is tradition at Gonzaga. It is back, baby, and I needed to get my tenting experience back as an alum here. I'm joined by this great fine group of young men. Tent number one. Guys, how does it feel knowing you're going to be front row tonight? It feels great, baby. So great. It feels great. Yeah. 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 How long have you guys been out here? Oh, I got out here last night around 11 o'clock. You know, I spent the night in the dump and rain undercover. The cement's a little hard, but hey, it's totally worth it. You slept on the cement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it was cold. It was like 40 degrees outside, but yeah, it's totally worth it. We love basketball out here, so. You guys are freshmen, correct? We are. Yeah. All freshmen. Yep. Okay. All freshmen. Yep. What do you guys expect from this game tonight? It's a huge, we're going to get a huge dub. A, Zags by a 90. Decimation, yeah. A decimation. A <laughs> decimation. Yeah. Are you guys excited for your first game in the kennel, like first regular season game in the kennel as freshmen? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> what are you guys the most excited about? Timmy celebration, baby. We're getting yes, ready. Sir. My voice is going out. My voice is going out. Yes, yes, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, there is a lot of hype around the next game for Gonzaga. Uh, I'm assuming you guys haven't done tent running yet for Texas, right? That hasn't happened yet? It hasn't, no, it hasn't, it hasn't happened it. yet. Okay, so just what are you guys hoping for in terms of the tenting situation for the Texas game? Oh, man, an experience. We're looking forward to it. We've been excited for it since the yeah. first day of school. We've been looking forward to this game, the Texas game. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be out. We're going to get after it. What do you guys expect for that game? A big win, hopefully. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a close game. Texas is really good. Prove really ourselves good. as number one. Prove oh, yeah. ourselves as number one. Yeah. Sure. Get some respect. Yeah. Get some That's respect. Yes, sir. The Zags really struggling with respect this year at, at number one in the country. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what when you guys came, decided to come to Gonzaga, is this one of the huge reasons why you came for, for the moments like these? Yeah, oh, 100%. Absolutely. I mean, my uh, my grandpa was on the basketball team, and uh, you know, so cool to be here watching these games and uh, his footsteps. So, yeah, yeah, pretty stoked. That's super awesome. Thank you guys so much. Gonzaga and Dixie State tip off at 6 o'clock tonight. But like Mark said, we already had a college basketball game in the, here in the Inland Northwest today. Travis Green joining us now with more from WSU. Yeah, that's right, Brenna. Uh, you're not just excited here in Spokane. Out in Pullman, Washington State men's basketball also opened up the season today with a noon game out in Pullman against Alcorn State. The Cougars returning just two starters from last year's team, however. The Cougs opened up the season with a win as they took down the Braves 85-67. How about that score? The star of today's game was Tyrell Roberts, the redshirt junior guard transfer from UC San Diego, led all scorers with 16 points. He shot 50% from the field and made four threes to pace the Cougars offense. The Cougars were up 14 at half and went on to win an 11 and two run to begin the second half, which just put this game away for good. Well, next up for the Cougars is a matchup with Seattle on Friday night at Beasley Coliseum. That game is set for a 7 p.m. tip off. G Gonzaga men's basketball open up the season tonight. As you know, the women, well, they have to wait a couple more days. Thursday will be tip off of the season against Montana State. The Bulldogs are coming off a 23 and 4 season with the West Coast Conference Championship. However, they did get bounced in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Now a new season with new opportunities and a more back to normal feel with teams being able to have fans in the stands. The Zags ready to get rolling and feel good about where they're at. It just felt different. We had to work through different issues than normal. You're not just focusing on basketball. You're worried about if we're going to pass the next COVID test and if, if you have your mask and you know all of those things. So um, I'm excited for Thursday just to get back to something that seems kind of normal. Based on how we played last game and just how we've been practicing um, coming up to this next game on Thursday, I feel like we're in a really good place to play on Thursday, so I feel like we're doing good and we're really prepared. 
And of course, we'll have coverage of the Bulldogs first game of the season for you right here on Crim 2 News this Thursday. Mark, I'll send it back to you. Travis, thank you very much. All right, let's transition to talk weather now. A lot of us woke up to rain this morning and a lot of rain, although things ended on a dry note this afternoon. Let's head out now to meteorologist Thomas Patrick in the Outdoor Weather Center. Thomas, we were expecting that we could potentially see a rain snow mix this morning. I didn't see any where I live on the South Hill. What about you? Yeah, I did not get any uh, this morning either, but we have seen just a couple pictures from across the area of a bit of snow trying to mix in, but officially no snow out at the airport. That's how it's going to be measured. All rain from today, actually about a quarter inch of it from the morning hours. This was between three and nine o'clock in the morning. You see plenty of blue pretty much in our northern and eastern areas. Might be a little bit of snow that was trying to stick in northern Spokane County, otherwise mainly a mountain snow event. Currently pretty dry and actually quite sunny here in Spokane. Some lingering showers near the Lewiston area and towards north central Idaho. But boy, is it windy out here. We've seen wind gusts close to 30 miles per hour today, and it is putting a wind chill factor into the atmosphere. It feels so cold out here, even as of 4 o'clock. Temperatures largely in the low 40s as of this moment will easily drop into the 30s later on tonight. Dry for a couple days, but more cold rain on the way for the second half of the week. We're timing out those next weather systems already. Thomas will check back in with you later in the broadcast. Thank you very much. In the meantime, we are learning more about the Spokane teen who was allegedly murdered by his girlfriend's father. The accused killer told police he killed 19 year old Andrew after learning he sold his daughter into sex trafficking. Andrew's family, however, disputes that claim. Tonight, Krem 2's Amanda Rowley shares a statement the family released about who they say Andrew was. Amanda? Mark, I spoke with Andrew's mother over the phone today, and she told me they buried Andrew yesterday and are still processing the, this loss in the family. Now, since this is an open investigation, the victim's family cannot say much more than the statement that they shared with us today. Now, it says Andrew was a foster child who came into their home when he was six months old. The family says he was born with cerebral palsy, autism, and diagnosed as being developmentally delayed, which is why he was extra special to them. Now, they searched for Andrew for about a year, and now the family is grieving his death. They say from the claims from the man who admitted to killing Andrew are hurtful and only added to their grief. The statement also reiterates that the FBI and Washington State Patrol confirmed they are not investigating the murder victim for sex trafficking. Now, the family is confident that Andrew will get justice and eventually the truth will come out. And they are asking the public to withhold judgment until the investigation is complete. Last night, Andrew's family held a candlelight vigil to honor his life. I don't understand why everybody's taking this side on it. There's a 19 year old that lost his life here and people are forgetting that. He died in the trunk. Nobody wants to die. Now, as I mentioned, this is an ongoing investigation, but here's what we know from court documents. The murder suspect admitted to police he killed Andrew after he says he learned the 19 year old sold his daughter into sex trafficking. He later abandoned his car with Andrew's body in the trunk. Now, Spokane police say detectives are still working to confirm what the suspect claims was his motive. Beyond that, police cannot share any further information at this time. Reporting in the newsroom, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Amanda, thank you very much. Today, Pfizer asked the FDA for emergency use authorization of its booster shot for everyone 18 and older. The company says this comes after results of a trial involving more than 10,000 people showed 95% efficacy against symptomatic COVID-19. Originally, Pfizer tried to get the FDA's OK for everyone 16 and older, but the agency instead approved them for a more limited group. Well, when we talk about all the growth in our region, we can't forget about Spokane Valley. Coming up after the break, we are live in the valley with details on the growth just east of Spokane. And coming up tomorrow as part of our Boomtown coverage week, we take a look at the latest timeline for the North-South Freeway. And I think that's really important uh, to make segments drivable sooner so the public can see their tax dollars at work. So if you're heading up to Deer Park and you can pop off and jump on Trent and go all the way up north pretty quickly, that's going to make a big deal in, in your quality of life. The president's infrastructure bill and how that could also be a factor. Could it possibly move up the timeline to complete the project sooner? And I believe we're looking at a uh, potential of 2030. Are you as a state legislator going to be able to influence how that money is spent and where it goes? 
Krem 2's Whitney Ward sits down with Spokane State Representative Marcus Wichelli to learn more about how soon drivers can expect the next portion of the freeway to be ready for drivers. Plus, how many houses had to be destroyed to make way for the project and what can be done to try to create more opportunities for affordable housing in Spokane. That is tomorrow night right here on Krem 2 News at 6.